Again, welcome back, everybody. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed your luncheon. Uh, before I begin my formal remarks, I should point out that uh, that camera in the back is not just here for effect. Uh, we are, in fact, uh, broadcasting this ceremony uh, live throughout Greater Bedford. Um, for those of you that might like to view it or recommend it to your friends and neighbors later, it's available streaming. And I am also told that any of the awardees who would like to get a copy, it can be made available to you from the offices of BCTV. So uh, our good friends at BCTV are doing some pretty exciting stuff uh, these days in terms of getting information out around Greater Bedford, and they are to be applauded. So again, welcome to the first annual presentation of the Bedford School's Hall of Fame Awards. So first, what are these things? The Bedford School's Hall of Fame has been established to recognize and honor those individuals who have attended Bedford Schools, worked in Bedford Schools, or their administration, or participated in the broader Bedford community for the improvement of our schools, and who have made exceptional contributions to the school or community. This includes, if you will, three different kinds of people. It includes students individuals who attended the Bedford School District and who made a significant contribution to their school on the basis of their skill, ability, academic achievement, sportsmanship, and or truly exceptional contributions to their community or society in general. And I might point out, by the way, that that, um, that definition applies to, if you will, the broader uh, school community. So graduates, for example, of Manchester West are also eligible for the Bedford Schools Hall of Fame. Second community includes teachers. And this might include teachers, coaches, administrators, and school volunteers who have made a significant contribution to student development, to a team's athletic success. They have promoted sound educational values or been recognized for truly exceptional contributions to their schools. The third category is the broader Bedford community. This may be individuals who have attended the Bedford School District and have made positive contributions to the school district, community, or society in general. How does one get to be an awardee? Nominations for consideration as a candidate to the, to the Hall of Fame uh, are submitted to the Hall of Fame committee and can be made by anyone in Bedford. So if you've got your favorite teacher, your favorite coach, your favorite administrator, please feel free to, uh, to make nominations in, in subsequent years. Those nominations are reviewed by, guess what, a review committee. The review committee is composed of the superintendent, the high school principal, a school board member, as well as community members and school staff members. Um, by nature of your presence here today, there are no surprises. Unlike the Oscars or the Emmys, we have no envelopes to open to tell you who the awardees are. Uh, so what follows will come as no surprise. The recipients of this inaugural Hall of Fame awards are Bill Greiner, Tim Mays, Sue Mullen, Dennis Pope, Ann Remus, and Bill Whitmore. Um, each of those individuals will be introduced by someone that they have chosen to say a few words of introduction. Uh, they've promised us to be brief, and then the speakers themselves will receive their awards, and I'm sure they will also say a few brief words. Uh, the first introduction will be Bill Hagen, who will be introducing Bill Whitmore. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Paul Brock because he stepped up to be the MC, which meant I didn't have to. <laughs> thank you, Paul. And he, he's doing a much better job than I could have. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as introduced, Bill Hagen, I'm the principal here at Bedford High School, and I have the honor to introduce our first inductee, um, a colleague of mine and a friend. Um, let me begin by saying that Bill Whitmore, uh, talk a little bit about his education. Bill received his bachelor's degree from St. Bonavent Bonaventure University uh, and his master's in education from the University of Vermont. He spent 29 years, he has 29 years of experience as a high school athletic director, 
physical education and intramurals director. He has a year of experience as an assistant principal, 12 years coaching Division I basketball at the college level, and two years of high school coaching and teaching. Bill worked in some pretty exceptional uh, uh, places in his career. Um, his teaching took place out at uh, uh, the Central School in uh, the Rush Rushford Central School in Rushford, New York. Um, he was an assistant varsity ba uh, basketball coach at Orlean High School in Orlean, New York. He was an assistant basketball coach and physical education instructor at the University of Vermont in Burlington. He was an assistant basketball coach at St. Bonaventure University. Uh, the head basketball coach at the University of Vermont in Burlington. He was an assistant principal at two elementary schools. Bill moved into the, into the directors of athletics position, uh, first at Concord High School, and from the years 1990 to 2006, um, Concord High School won, under his leadership, 55 state championships, and he placed 41 other teams in state championship games. Bill moved on to work in the, pri in the private industry, of private uh, education, uh, as the director of, of athletics and physical education and intramurals at Milton Academy in uh, Milton, Mass. But then he came to his senses and he decided to come to work here in Bedford. Uh, and for the past eight years, uh, from 2009 to 2017, Bill has led our athletic program and our wellness program here. And during that time, um, Bill has, again, led Bedford High School to 52 state championships, and he's placed 43 teams in state championship games. Quite an impressive uh, uh, set of experiences. Bill's colleagues recognize him all around the state. Uh, Bill has a number of, of uh, received a number of awards around the state. Back in 1994, uh, Bill was uh, selected as both the Class L Athletic Director of the Year and the State Athletic Director of the Year. In 1996, he won the, NHI, the NIAAA State Award of Merit. In the years of 19, from 1992 to 2012, the NHIA Sportsmanship Award, which is a, what we believe is a very prestigious award that's presented to high schools that have demonstrated a high degree of sportsmanship throughout the year. Uh, in 2006, once again, he was recognized as the Class L Athletic Director of the Year. In 2013, he was named um, uh, as the winner of the James Damaris Service Award, probably one of the most prestigious awards that, uh, that someone involved in athletics can receive for service, service to, to students and, and to athletics. Uh, in 2017, once again, Bill was nominated and, and won the Athletic Director of the Year in Division I and the State Championship, uh, excuse me, the uh, Athletic Director of the Year in the State. Bill has some hobbies. He loves to run. He loves to weightlift. He stays in great shape. Um, he swims, likes a little bit of landscaping. Um, he likes his music, and he loves to read. Bill Whitmill's accomplishments over the course of his long professional career, I would, I would guess and you would agree, um, are impressive. The impact and influence he has had over the lives of the young men and women he has taught, advised, coached, and led most recently here in, Be in the Bedford community, are immeasurable. A gentleman of outstanding character, principle, compassion, and commitment, anyone who has had the good fortune to be associated with Bill is a better person for it. The world of athletics offers those who participate uh, the opportunity to experience important life skills that influence an individual for a lifetime. Under Bill's leadership in Bedford, he set a standard high for himself and for those involved in the programs he supervised. As the building principal and representative of the community, we are extremely grateful for a legacy of character, principle, and commitment that Bill has established here in Bedford. On the personal side, Bill, Bill's commitment and love of family is obvious. Anytime you talk with Bill about the important things in life, Jill, his sons, daughter, and grandchildren are at the center of his, the conversation. I've had the privilege of knowing Bill Whitmore as a colleague and a valued friend over these past nine years, and I was honored when he asked me to introduce him uh, to the Bedford Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the first class of the 2017-18 Hall of Fame, still the sharpest dresser I know, Bill Whitmore. <laughs>
I might just I might just point out I should have earlier what Bill is to receive only temporarily is the Bedford Schools Hall of Fame plaque. We're going to give it to Bill. Bill's going to give it back to us. It will then be mounted in a permanent exhibit in the hallway of the high school. Bill will also receive the world's biggest paperweight. So I hope you have a big, big style of papers on your desk. For those that can't see, that's, that's the Bedford Bulldog. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Bill Hagan. Uh, I'm walking around the halls for seven years while Bill was the principal. Students inevitably would come up to me and get us confused. They would say, Mr. Hagan, hello, how are you? Good morning. So at first I said, ah, that's, that's fine, that's a compliment. And after a while they kept calling me Mr. Hagan. So one student came up and I said, I appreciate the compliment. Uh, Mr. Hagan makes more money. I'm Mr. Whitmore. Mr. Hagan, <laughs> Mr. Hagan makes more money than I do, but I'm better looking. So. But Bill, I appreciate it. The uh, seven years we got a chance to work together was phenomenal. Uh, we run on, right on the same page, expectations, commitment, uh, priorities, uh, a yearning and a hunger for excellence. And it's really important that when, that, and people here can attest to that, when you work with somebody and the people around you, it doesn't become work when everybody's working together. When you care about each other, when you can be honest, you can be upfront, uh, you're on the same page with things, and sometimes you're not, but it's really important that you work in, a, in an environment like Bedford. So it, it, I was really fortunate to be here, but thank you, Bill. And I know Bill has a number of years left to be the principal and keep this high school headed in a great direction. I'd like to thank the in Hall of Fame Induction Committee for uh, the vote of confidence. All family and friends who had any part, writing letters, making phone calls on my behalf, uh, to get me inducted into the Hall of Fame. I sincerely appreciate that. I'd like to congratulate all my fellow inductees uh, on a job well done, and I'm in with impressive credentials and people. And I'm actually looking forward to sitting back down and hearing the next five inductees and their intros, because I, I am truly fortunate to be in an outstanding class of educational leaders and, and just great people. Uh, the journey here in Bedford started in 2009. Uh, after 34 years running around the country, uh, an old friend of mine who we worked together in Concord for four and a half years, happened to be the superintendent here in Bedford, Tim Mays, uh, called me up and said, Bill, would you be interested in the job at Bedford High School, getting a chance to build an athletic program? And uh, it was appealing for two reasons, actually three reasons. The first reason was I had a chance to be back with Tim working again. The second reason, and not in this order, uh, would be to be moved back from Milton Academy to Concord so I could actually be with my family more instead of just weekends. And then the third one was that the opportunity to build an athletic program in an unbelievable community and school district. So I was truly blessed. But that, that was my journey. Uh, on a personal note, I'd like to thank any recognition that I've ever received has all been a credit to the love, commitment, and effort of my family. My wife, Jill, my uh, children, Aaron, in uh, chronological order, Aaron, Nick, and Natalie. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, being a great family. Our, do our daughter-in-law, B is here today, Nick's wife, and then our grandson, Kit. So uh, I've been very blessed. Uh, this would not have been possible without the outstanding coaches and administrators in, in, uh, in this district. Uh, I've worked at seven different places, two major universities, and the school board, the commitment from the school board and administration it has been the best I've ever experienced here in my last eight years in this business at Bedford. So I was really lucky to come here in 2009 and be the director of athletics because of the outstanding coaches and educators, community members, uh, people like uh, Bill Greiner who uh, in the community that just helps and helps and helps. I've been really fortunate. So on behalf of the committee again and everybody who helped out, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm humbled and I have a lot of pride to be a bulldog for life. Thank you.
Our next award goes to Sue Mullen, and she will be introduced by another of our awardees, Ann Remus. It's great to be here today. <clears throat> and I'm not sure how the sound is. is. Is the sound good for everybody? It's okay? Um, I'm delighted that Sue asked me to introduce her today. I was given instructions that the introduction should be personal, and so mine is very personal. I met Sue in 1978. <laughs> I met Sue in 1978. Paul and I didn't have kids in the Bedford schools yet. Uh, Amy and Dana were five and three. But there was a concern among parents that the teachers' salaries weren't keeping up with those of surrounding communities. And we knew that we wanted good teachers in good schools in Bedford. So Paul and I hosted a gathering of people in our home to get out the vote to support the teachers' contract. Sue came to that gathering with a number of other teachers who went on to have long careers in Bedford. Peter and Ruthie McGee, for example. It was Sue's first year of teaching, she was 21 years old, and she was defending teachers' salaries. <laughs> Last year, as president of the BEA, Sue was defending teachers' salaries. Nice bookends to a career. After that evening, Sue and I quickly became friends and then buddies. So I could tell stories all day long about the funny, warm, touching things Sue has done for the individuals in our family because her relationship with each has been unique. Once when she was babysitting overnight for Jeb, so Paul and I could be away, to get him to go to bed faster, she was going to race him up the stairs to see who could get in their jammies first. The speed of a three-year-old being what it was, she felt he might be traumatized forever, having seen her half naked. <laughs> when he was four, they would have philosophical conversations on car rides home from the Bedford Village morning school when she was kind enough to pick him up. She comforted nine-year-old Dana for the better part of a school year after my mother had died suddenly. When Amy was in her fifth grade class, Sue assigned a Name the Remus Baby essay contest as we all awaited Jeb's birth. I still have those wonderful fifth graders' essays. Paul tended to have slightly more uproarious interactions with Sue, including an episode with a super soaker filled with perfume water in her classroom at McKelvey that probably would have resulted in him being arrested if he did it today. But in a more innocent era, it was just fun. There was the day I was outside her classroom <clears throat> near the end of the long hallway in Memorial School. Some of you are familiar with it. It was 1985. I was her great books volunteer, so I was there in the middle of the day. And somehow, with the students inside her classroom, Sue and I were out in the hallway laughing hysterically sort of loudly. Arnie McDonald came out of his office at the end of that hallway and said, your, plural, behavior is totally unacceptable. I slunk out of the school. He was right, of course, but we had a wonderful moment of friendship, if inappropriately timed. Why do I indulge in this going down memory lane regarding Sue. It's because there are many, many others, some in this room and many in the community, who also have a singular connection with Sue. And that as I'm talking, those of you who do remember her well are probably in your own thoughts, enjoying the memory of those times. Sue is a relational person. She knew her students well, and cared for them as individuals. She's just a person who thinks about and cares about people. You can teach a teacher subject matter, that's easy. But you can't teach the core aspects of personality. Sue chose her profession well, or perhaps it chose her. 
After 12 years of classroom teaching, she spent 27 years as an extraordinary school counselor. Students found their way to her office and found refuge or tough love as needed. Parents accepted, mostly welcomed, her straight talk regarding parenting. Teacher colleagues looked to her for advice on handling classroom behavior or how to comfort a grieving student. Some Bedford administrators I know occasionally visited her school, her, her office after school, or had her come to Meeting House Road to have a cup of coffee and solicit her thoughts on district issues. Sue has a heart for children who deal with physical, mental, and emotional challenges, whether as a Bedford Bobcats coordinator or a presenter on how best to serve students on the autism spectrum, Sue's deep knowledge has made the Bedford school, <coughs> school, school excuse me, better for all students. This year, Sue is representing Bedford teachers as one of the best of the best. There will be others to join her in the years to come. But for this inaugural Hall of Fame year, I am thrilled to have the honor of introducing Susan Mary Mullen. Strong lady. It's beautiful. Huh? Thank and, you. And Paul. look at the look at the very pretty lady that's on the plane. Okay. I wondered where that headshot was going. <laughs> Sandy Willie got a hold of me and asked me if I had a headshot. <laughs> Find a school district personnel that has a headshot somewhere. They got a photograph. Um, I want to thank Anne for her generous introduction. Uh, I will kid her a little bit, she reminded me last week that at some point in time, I told her that she was going to be responsible for delivering my eulogy. <laughs> so, thank you. So the fact that uh, I have replaced that event with this event is probably, yeah. She also told me that she was not going to tell the story about us getting in trouble with Arnie McDonald. Because the end of the story was that she called me at the end of the school day, and at that time we only had telephones in the office and the library. So I went into the library to pick up the phone, and she said to me, I am never setting foot in that building again. I am totally mortified. And of course, the subscript is that she then went on to not only work for the district, but to lead the district as the superintendent of schools. So. Uh, the people that know me best would likely agree that there are two things that are true about me, at least two. One, that due to my overattention to detail, it is very hard to surprise me. The second thing is that I'm not much of a crier. So you can only imagine how large my reaction was when I received the letter from Chip McGee indicating that I was going to be bestowed with this honor today. I nearly passed out, and I burst into tears. To say that I'm honored is really a gross understatement. Uh, this is the inaugural year of the Hall of Fame. I'm thrilled to stand here and represent everyone, and to say that um, I, I have a little secret. I'm like the anti-Bill Whitmore because I have spent every minute of my professional career right here. So uh, 39 years in one place, you know what they say about house guests and fish, right, after three days? <laughs> so 39 years uh, in one place, Anne's right, mostly positive as far as the community has been concerned. But I want to, to let you in on something. If there had never been a Karen Maitland or a Maureen Lembo, or an Al Fredette, Sue Mullen would have just been an ordinary teacher. If there had never been an Arnie McDonald, a Jan Radonis, or an Ed Joyce, Sue Mullen would have just been a dutiful employee. What 
I have done in my career here that obviously um, has gained some recognition would never have been possible as an individual. It has always been because of who I have worked with and for, and for that, I am eternally thankful. It's my peers, it's the Bedford community, it's the parents, it's the kids. In fact, it's always been about the kids that made it so easy to go to work every morning, even on a bad day, and my gratitude can't be measured. At the end of the day, as Bill said, I always got to go home, and that was a blessing for me because uh, my family was able to not only recognize that they would never be able to tell when I would be home or for how long I would be home, but that they were there to fill the cup at the end of the day so that I could get up in the morning and go back to work and uh, do it all over again. I stand here as the first in what I only anticipate will be a legion of staff members that will earn the distinction of standing here. I look forward to uh, the nominations I make myself as we move forward because I, I know some people that I think uh, probably should have been here before me, so I'll be right on them next year. And I want to thank the selection committee for all of their hard work. In fact, thank you to everyone who had anything to do with putting on today's event. Um, I look forward to seeing you in unexpected places, and congratulations to my fellow recipients. Thank you. Our next award goes to Dennis Pope. Dennis was Bedford's first superintendent of schools, and he will be introduced by Chip McGee, our most recent superintendent of schools, our current superintendent of schools. That's, like that that's better than most like recent, like isn't it? <laughs> I like that phrasing better. Board member Brock. <laughs> so um, you're going to get a little sick of me. I have three introductions to do. Um, uh, and uh, it actually, for me, uh, is a remarkable honor. Uh, I get to introduce uh, the three former superintendents in Bedford. And I've really struggled over the right metaphor to use. Uh, maybe I thought we could use um, the unveiling of Mount Rushmore. Uh, and then I realized I didn't know um, who would be Roosevelt. Um, I also thought I could compare it to a whole person. Um, and, you know, there's, there's the muscle and the mind uh, and the heart and the skeleton. And I thought that gets a little kind of Frankenstein-y at a certain point, so I decided not to use that one either. Um, so I went simple. Uh, these three superintendents uh, helped bring uh, this great district into uh, existence, including this incredible high school. Dennis Pope served as the first superintendent of schools for Bedford from 1989 to 2003. Before that, we were a part of the Merrimack School District. Dennis laid the foundation for all of our practices here. In fact, we still use many of those practices. I still use many of those practices that he first established. I think everyone in the room knows that uh, this district, this community would have an excellent school system, would have a very good school system just because of the community. But it is great because of Dennis. He always expected us to look at the data what is the data in that circumstance? What does it tell you about what to do? And that said, he also, behind the scenes, always made sure that we looked out for our people. Dennis Pope.
Well, this is going to be quite interesting. Um, a little aside before I get started. Um, back years ago, when I was um, president of the Principals Association, I had to give a speech. And in part of my speech, I talked about a book that I had read about the, the buffaloes. Here goes Annie. And so now, uh, after that, uh, one of my close friends decided it'd be appropriate to give me a buffalo as I left the office of president. Now I'm getting a bulldog, and I can just see the two on my mantle going at it. <laughs> my uh, worst nightmare has just happened. I have the luxury of following Sue Mullen. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to take a little longer as the first and probably the oldest here, so I apologize, but... Well, well, that's what I was told, too, but... Um, uh, everything you heard about, Sue, is absolutely correct. However, you didn't hear some important things that happened. First of all, she was about teacher salaries. In the middle of my tenure here, approximately, she was also the president of the association. So when you talk about tough love, uh, she's a counselor. I was a superintendent. Many of you probably don't know this, but she had a nice chair in her office, and she invited me in to sit down and help me get through things without getting too upset. Thank you, Sue. That's called tough love. First of all, I want to congratulate all the other inductees, and what's been said before me is so true. It's truly an honor to be among the first to be inducted into this Hall of Fame. I also want to take a few minutes, and I want to pick up on what somebody else said earlier, and that is that um, there are a number of thank yous that have to go out today. Obviously, to the selection committee, to whoever nominated me, and for the opportunity and the privilege of being here today. So I thank you. I also want to thank all the present and all the past school board people. It's great that we are being honored here today. And I can tell you, contrary to popular opinion, when I was a superintendent, um, I did not tell the school board what to do. If you think you can tell Paul Brock and Cindy what to do, you're wrong. But they Every single school board member that I can think of for 14 years, actually 15 because I was the assistant superintendent for one year, have been so supportive and we were able to do things that many other districts couldn't do. And when I left the superintendency, I did some consulting for, I don't know, 10 years maybe, nine years. And I had an opportunity to go to a lot of places and meet with school boards and other people. And I learned to be exceptionally humbled by how fortunate I was to be in this district with the quality of school board members that you have and have had. So thank you, past and present school board members. The next group I want to thank is the leadership team. Those are the directors, the principals, the assistant principals, all those people who met every week as a team as we solved how to become the best that we could be for the children of this community. Now, I do want to take a minute and give a little historical perspective. And I don't know how I capture 15 years in three to five minutes. And um, so, but I'll do my best. Uh, I was very fortunate to be here from the very start Back in the 1970s, I interviewed for a job in Merrimack, New Hampshire, with then the superintendent of schools for Bedford and Merrimack, Claude Levitt. And it was a very interesting interview, to say the least. And at the end of the interview, he looked at me and he said, where do you want to be when you grow up in five to 10 years? And I looked him right in the eye and I said, sitting where you are. And I went home that night and I said to my wife, Elaine, I just blew it. I'm sure I'm not going to get that job. Well, the good news is I did get the job, and I spent 13 years there, and then, and then he left and retired, and I became the assistant superintendent, and the better news is that I was selected. 
uh, by the committee here to be the first full-time superintendent for the district. So for that, I'm very grateful. And I, I have to tell you that um, I have valued beyond belief. There are no words that I can tell you how appreciative I was to have the opportunity to serve as the first full-time superintendent and this community and the children of this community. This community, through its school board, through its school board, and that's important, expected and appreciated quality. So, they, in the final analysis, as you think about it, they not only expected it, but they caused it to happen. They caused it to happen by keeping all of us on our toes and telling us that they did expect the quality. So in 1990, seems like only yesterday, after being here a year, I went into the meeting with the staff and I thought about, you know, Bedford is a great school district. It feels really good. But where's the proof? Where is the proof of Bedford's goodness? And from 1990 till I left in 2003, that was the rallying cry. And the three C's come to mind. Culture. We developed a culture where we expected learning would be cherished and honored and ultimately celebrated. We tried to expect uh, the community to become a community of learners. Matter of fact, you still use something we developed back then, that all people, not only the children, but every single person who worked in the Bedford School District would be a learner all the time, every year, year in and year out. And lastly, we looked at the concept of continuous improvement. I can remember going to meetings and the big thing back then was, you know, you develop a plan and you put this big thing together for a year and then you put it on the shelf and five years later you go back and say, oh, well, how do we do? Well, we didn't do that. We developed a plan, we developed goals, we developed objectives, and every single year, at least twice a year, we would sit down and we say, where are we, how are we doing, how can we become better? And so that's, that's how we adjusted and that's how you have such a fantastic school district today. As I walked in, I took my youngest son and we took a walk down the, the hallway to see all of the things that this high school has accomplished, to see all the things that the elementary and the middle schools have accomplished, to see the programs that you have in your auditorium is astounding and good to see. When I left the superintendency, a lot of people said to me, what is your legacy? I'm pleased to tell you here today, I have an answer. My legacy was hiring and retaining excellent people who cared about children and their education. My legacy was to have enough brains to know that Ann Remus and Tim Mays could follow me and take it to an all different level, higher and higher. That is my legacy. For that opportunity, I thank this community. I thank Paul Brock and all the other board members, Cindy, for the opportunity to be of service. And may God bless all of you. Thank you, Dennis. Um, our next award uh, goes to another former superintendent, Ann Remus. Chip? We're switching order? Yes. <laughs> We're switching order. That was on purpose. It is Ann Remus. That was, that was a test. You passed. Exactly. Thank you. So, um, uh, actually, I forgot to mention that uh, when it was three uh, superintendents uh, that, the, the three superintendents that were being 
um, acknowledged. Um, it turns out that I think this must happen as you uh, become superintendent, so maybe it's happening to me. But all three of them, separate and independently, called me um, and began to indirectly, directly tell me how the ceremony was supposed to go, <laughs> who was supposed to say what when. Um, the good thing about it, and, and Dennis, joking aside, I think this says something to what you just said. Um, they, I don't think they were coordinating, but they were all on the same page in terms of how this should go. Ann Remus served as superintendent of schools in Bedford from 2003 to 2006. She took, this is personal, she took the unbelievable risk um, of hiring uh, a kid uh, teacher from New York uh, who had just moved to New Hampshire, me, as the assistant superintendent in 2003. Uh, but I think the reason that we're here is that Anne committed the full force of her character that was built over decades of ethical, passionate citizenship in the community to get Bedford behind the creation of its high school. Deserving of that celebration. <laughs> um, that, that legacy, I think, is the one that we're here for. But there's a second one I want you to know that you need to keep in mind. At the same time, Anne's legacy also includes the expectation of high quality research-based instruction, starting with reading, for every single child. Anne Remus. Oh boy. Careful, it's heavy. Lots of paper under there. Thank you. <coughs> well, I have to be honest, I started writing something, and this is what it said. I, I, I'm embarrassed by this. I said I was a little grouchy when Chip first called me and told me about this, I, and, and I was. <laughs> I'm not sure why, I think it was a lack of grace. But honestly, uh, there is no question that it's an honor to be here that this is an incredible, we know this, and all of us here know that this is an incredible school district and that incredible school districts are built and built and built and built. So I really am honored. Um, I, I wanna thank the committee. Um, you know, I, I probably was grouchy because I think there are a lot of other people uh, who've done wonderful things. Um, so you end up just being a representative of a sense of um, increasing excellence. Dennis did begin, Dennis was my mentor, and Dennis did begin the whole concept way back at the beginning of his superintendency of constant improvement. That you were never going to be able to say, we're here, look at us, we've built this school, it's fantastic that every year there's gonna be something that you say, this is what we need to work on this year. And as we all know, in whatever business you're in, in whatever walk of life you're in, as soon as you start saying, wow, we're pretty good, that is the beginning of the end. So I am absolutely delighted to be here today in this group. Um, I love that Chip is over here grinning, I'm not sure why. <laughs> uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful group. Um, so yeah, and I'm and I'm I'm so excited that I had the opportunity to go from the dream of a Bedford High School to since I left seeing the work that has turned this high school into an extraordinary school. Um, so all of the people that are still here that followed me, um, I'm I'm so grateful to. And it is true. Um, trite but true that your successes are always on the shoulders of others. And if I were to go around this room, I can look at practically every table and say there's someone on whose shoulders uh, I stand. But because we don't want to be here forever, I'm going to thank in aggregate except for my husband. And I've practiced not getting teary. 
So my method, in case anybody else has trouble with this, is you think about pita bread. As soon as you think about pita bread, <laughs> you don't cry. <laughs> so my, my unbelievable dear husband of 48 years, um, I wouldn't have done many, many things in life without his something past urging, prodding, uh, to let me think that I could accomplish things I wouldn't have thought I could accomplish. So it's been a great life. Love you. Um, so just in, in ending, I'm, I'm so happy to be in the presence of all these people that are the six of us together that represent the community in different ways. Um, I will say that I'm particularly uh, honored to be here in concert with Dennis, who, as I mentioned, was my mentor for the superintendency, and Tim, the, where is Tim? There he is. The, the financial whiz without whom I couldn't have been the superintendent. So uh, thank you to both of you in particular and to everybody that's here. Thank you so much. Nobody seems to want to take these things with them. <laughs> so how long do I get to keep it? Uh, until the end of the meeting. Oh. <laughs> Our next award goes to um, goes to Bill Greiner, who was receiving the award as a community member, but without stealing any of Terry's thunder, who's going to make the formal introduction, I might just point out that those of you who know Bill would probably agree that he could receive it as a school or say, as a school community member, as a town community member. I guess maybe the only way you don't qualify is as a student in Bedford, because you were too old for that. Um, Bill will be formally introduced by Terry Wolf. Terry is a, a friend of mine, a neighbor of mine, a state representative, and also a former school board member. Thanks, Terry. Good afternoon. Thank you, Bill Hagan. I think, I don't know if I'm right about this, but I think this was your brainchild, or maybe, and maybe Chip McGee, and, and thank you so much. And as Cindy said, oh, when I walked in the door, Cindy Shagnon, this is like getting the old band back together. This is, it's really, really wonderful. And I, I haven't said hello to half the people that I know, but it's so good to see everybody here. But um, this is not about me. And so um, I do want to let Bill Greiner know that my husband, Dave, reminded me this is not a roast. So um, I am keeping that in context. Um, Bill Greiner gets things done. Whether it's building an urgent care facility, opening a restaurant that has a two-hour wait every weekend, or raising money for refinishing a gym floor, Bill gets an idea of a project, and works tirelessly to make it happen. There are many things that I could talk about with Bill, but there are three that I'll share with you. The first is his work as part of Bedford High School Coalition. I first met Bill when I, when I was with Taxpayers for Quality Education, most likely back in 2002. There were two groups advocating for the high school. Let's say we had different styles, but we shared a common cause. We went through five or six elections in just a few years before the high school was approved. Before an election, we would meet at Bill's house on a Saturday and make phone calls. If you can imagine, this was the time when we didn't all have cell phones and we would sit in Bill's basement and make hundreds of phone calls, reminding people to vote. On election day, literally thousands of people would come out to vote. We'd set up tents, and Bill would sit outside of McKelvey all day long. He remembered who voted, and more importantly, who hadn't shown up yet. He would pull out his flip phone, 
and off the top of his head, call friends he had not yet seen and remind them that the polls were open until 7 p.m. Second, some people know this, but many people do not. Bill has a big humanitarian side. When Riley was sick, many people fed us. Bill signed up on the list, and I wondered if Bonnie cooked. Bill offered T-bones. Riley loved the chicken fingers. So we ordered two chicken fingers, I mean, we ordered chicken fingers and two slices of chocolate cake. The cake was delicious, and the slices are huge, so two was just right for our family. At delivery time, I opened the door, and there was Bill with an entire chocolate cake. <laughs> and the look on Riley's face is exactly why you bring an entire chocolate cake. So I'm sure you won't be surprised what, by what happened, but he would just randomly drop by with chocolate cakes after that for a while. There are other things that he has done when he has heard of someone in need or had a hard time, but they aren't my stories to share but they're there and they're powerful. And the final thing is all the projects he has worked on as president of Bedford's Friends of Recreation. He has made, raised money through dinners and auctions and donated the money to the school system. BFOR has finished gym floors, donated defibrillators to every school, and $50,000 to Memorial for a playground. They are currently working on raising money for bleachers at the high school. Bill has been a vital part of the Bedford community for over 20 years. Please join me in congratulating him as a member of Bedford's Hall of Fame inaugural class. I'll give you this, but don't hug me. Handshake. That'll work. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Um, I want to say, as my predecessors, that I'm very humbled to be part of this uh, inaugural uh, inductee class. Uh, and as Ann said um, eloquently, we're representatives. There easily could be dozens of people, uh, many in this room, many who could not make it here today, that could be up here in our, in our spots. Um, a school doesn't get built by one person. Uh, a good school system is not the product of one person. Uh, they are the products of a community. My wife and I moved our family up here from Florida in 1995, and we chose Bedford because of the school district and the reputation that it had. The only thing it was missing was this building. And like many uh, people who moved here around the time that we did in the mid-90s, we were told the same thing by our real estate agents. <laughs> You guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> Just wait, there'll be a Bedford High School when your kids need it. And it sounded good. And a couple of years later, as many of you know, I like to play basketball. I was playing basketball one day and asked Kevin Gibbs, and I don't know that Kevin is here today, although he was gonna try to make it, how do we get a Bedford High School? And he just laughed and said, that's just not something that's easy in this town. And I don't like to take no for an answer, so I pushed him. And he said, well, I'm gonna introduce you to a, a person named Paul Brock. And I think I called Paul uh, one night at his house, um, had a conversation, and I hung up perplexed as to why he just couldn't make it happen. After all, he was on the school board, and it should just be that easy, or so I thought. Um, I think Paul got tired of me, and he, he pawned me off on Sidney Shagnon. Um, Cindy was very gracious, and ex again, as Paul had done, explained how things work and what the process was and, and said, well, since I was so interested, maybe I would like to volunteer to sit on a high school study committee. Uh, and so I did that and I found that to be very interesting. Um, it was not made up of people that were necessarily all advocating high school. There were some that were, some that weren't. But that's really how I got uh, my feet wet into uh, community politics, so to speak. I ran for town council a couple years later. And after the second coffee that I went to, um, I was getting annoyed, people asking me about school questions, um, because I was there to talk about roads and fields and town issues. And so I called Sue Thomas and said, Sue, you're running for school board. 
um, you're, I don't think you were opposed at that, in that election. I said, but can you at least come with me and answer some of those questions? <laughs> so I dragged Sue uh, to uh, the balance of the coffees that year. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Along the way, I met a lot of good people. Many of you are in the room. We shared a passion for the community, a passion for education. And in, uh, after I was elected, we formed the Bedford High Coalition. Uh, it was myself, Brandy Nimmo, who's here, Michelle Sacklad, Bruce Searing, Jim Morgan, and uh, Bonnie Meadowbrook. Uh, I think you and I are the last two in, uh, in the room. Um, and that was a lot of fun, and I, I never understood why we would raise so much money in a given night just to advocate for school, but that's what it took. Um, it was a lot of work, and uh, I enjoy seeing everybody here today. It's, it's been years since we've been in the same room. Uh, I think once the high school got built and the community got behind it, people go their, their separate ways in, lives, and, and, and in their lives, but those are times that I will never forget. Um, as, as I mentioned, dozens of people could be here receiving this award. Uh, many of you are in here. As I said, um, this wasn't the work of one person or a couple of people. It was work work of dozens and dozens of people in the community. I'm just humbled um, to be up here. Um, I want to thank my, my wife, Bonnie, who's here. Um, many nights, as, as you know, when you're out working on things, you don't come home for dinner or you come home very late. You come home a little grouchy sometimes, particularly after an election doesn't go your way. Uh, my family was always there for me, my wife and my three kids. Um, and without their support, I couldn't have done what I did. I am proud to say all three of my kids went all the way through um, K to 12 here in Bedford. Um, they're all off uh, in college and graduate school. Uh, this school's district prepared them very, very well for where they are in life. Um, and that goes back to the superintendents that were here before me. You guys set the standard for the community. You brought great teachers in. Um, again, it's a community effort and, and I just can't thank everybody enough for that. Uh, in closing, I would like to thank the nominating committee, uh, those who may have nominated me, and uh, again, congratulations to my fellow inductees. It's, a, it's an honor, and I'm very humbled to be in this group. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Our next award goes again to a former superintendent, Tim Mays. Tim was our district superintendent from 2006 to 2014. And Tim will uh, be introduced again by Chip McGee. Okay, so Tim Mays. Tim's uh, the most recent superintendent uh, before me and therefore uh, hardest for me to put into perspective. Uh, I mean, I am still calling him <laughs> to ask him about stuff. Uh, for example, I had to call him recently and ask him about the composition of the fill underneath the far side of the track. <laughs> and Tim Mays being Tim Mays, he knew. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, that is emblematic of Tim Mays' leadership of the school district. He uh, knew every detail. No detail escaped him. And it's because of Tim that once the school, uh, once the community passed, um, uh, uh, decided uh, to build this school, he oversaw the set of complex transitions to establish Bedford High School, establish Ross A. Lurgio Middle School, uh, reconfigure McKelvey into a fifth and sixth grade uh, intermediate school, and reconfigure all three elementaries. Um, and just as one last comment, every year I look at uh, enrollments. Uh, I do enrollment projections. I'm pretty sure I still use your spreadsheet. Um, and uh, this district is, uh, on top of everything else, it's still the right size. We got the size right, too, on top of everything else. So um, I could go on because it really is remarkable for me to get to introduce these three today, but I'm not going to. Tim, you're up. <laughs> So I'm going to just uh, make a few comments today. Um, I think Bill Griner put it uh, very succinctly. This district is good because of uh, hundreds of people, not five or six, whatever the number is being inducted today. Um, 
and I have had time to, to reflect on that uh, now that we're retired, some of us here, uh, on how fortunate we were to be a part of this district um, during some very exciting and challenging times. Uh, but just to be part of that with the people, it's, uh, it's humbling, and I'm very grateful for that. I want to uh, make sure that I thank the people who are associated with the Hall of Fame uh, committee. Uh, I know that every program takes time and energy, and uh, that doesn't come cheaply. And hence, uh, whoever was involved, I saw Mark Elmendorf. I know Paul was probably in intimately involved. Uh, I uh, appreciate that effort. I also want to uh, congratulate those people who uh, have been uh, certainly uh, you saw the virtues extolled of the people in being inducted this year. Uh, they are wonderful uh, people, as well as wonderful educators. So when I was thinking about what I should uh, just make a few comments today, um, a couple of things came to mind. So the first one was <clears throat> a, an opening uh, meeting of the district where we held, which was held in uh, McKelvey Middle School. And then Ann Remus was talking to the faculty and staff. And I think that was the year that she talked about having uh, the goal be, how can we get all of our kids to flourish? And the word flourish, I think, has uh, stuck with this district uh, since that day, honestly. And I was thinking, so, so how, did this, how did my experience in Bedford help me flourish? And so I, I, I've thought a little bit about that. And it gets back to something, imagine the themes here, that Dennis mentioned, the culture. So I just want to talk about a few of the qualities of the culture of our district that I think have helped me. So the first, it gets back to Ann. Uh, student interests is the number one priority of this district. Everything else pales to what's important for kids. It's important to have, uh, you know, uh, school facilities. It's important to have support in terms of financial support. But in the end, if the people in the district don't put kids' interests first, then it's, I think it's all for naught. And I think Ann uh, symbolized how important that was and, and drove that home uh, during her time here. Another, another theme that I've noticed, uh, at least initially in my, in my tenure, was that, uh, and I've kidded Chip about this a few times, mistakes need to be considered as learning experiences and not as career enders. <laughs> and uh, I, I owe, I owe a, a thank you to Dennis. I, I think yours truly here made a, a, a few early on in my career. And Dennis did some novel things. We admitted our error, and we fixed it. Something you don't see too much these days. Admitting an error, and then going and fixing it. Hi, Emma. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> usually, usually, she wants cookies. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that having the uh, freedom to make some mistakes really allows people to be innovative, allows people to experiment. I know sometimes that's a bad word, but all in, only in the uh, purpose of trying to do what's right for kids. And Dennis, I think, was the one that showed me the right way to handle that, and I appreciate that very much. You've heard the word high expectations. I'm going to add a few more. Accountability and supports. So. I think all along there's been, uh, whether it be the community, uh, the superintendent, a principal, a teacher, uh, there's, there's high expectations throughout this district. But you also have to be held accountable to those high expectations. You also need to be supported so that you can achieve them. And what I've noticed is that uh, the people that are in the district help you along the way to do that. So I can just think of a few here. Bill Whitmore's name came to mind and how he uh, expected a lot out of his coaches but also supported them to be good at coaching. 
He wasn't afraid to hold them accountable when things weren't being done properly. But in the end, he encouraged them enough and supported them enough so that they were successful. My own personal experience, I would say board members, which there are many in this room here, who I spent many times chatting with, uh, getting good advice, uh, they provided me with supports to help me try to get things done uh, for our district. Community members, the uh, town manager, fire chief, police chief, all the people that are in the extended community that sometimes the school district, sometimes we forget about, all had a role to make sure that our school district was successful. And uh, I know that I could walk down the street, actually, and run to the town manager and talk to them about a situation that I needed their help. He would listen or she would listen and uh, give me good advice or help me get that done. So it's uh, amazing to have that. But high expectations don't, isn't the only thing. It's accountability and uh, supports. Then the other and final thing I wanted to mention about the culture is I would say that um, this district is extremely collaborative. Uh, we are a team. Dennis mentioned the leadership team, which is exceptional. But I would say that opening meeting at the beginning of the year, best day of the year, when you get all the teachers, all the administrators, the support staff, uh, it's really just, I, I miss that. I miss that a lot. And Sue Mullen's name comes to mind when I think of a collaboration kind of inside the district. Uh, you've heard about her uh, therapy sh sessions she's provided many of the administrators in her office, but I always found her to be frank, uh, supportive, uh, very informative, and uh, uh, she and I interacted in many different roles, and I, I, I think she was, uh, as, she, as you now see, a Hall of Fame member, uh, an exceptional person in making sure our, our district was a collaborative uh, arrangement amongst its employees. And then Bill Greiner is a good example of uh, collaboration and support outside uh, of the school district, but not outside the community. I think Bill represents the, the intense support and the commitment that this community has for its kids and its school district. And as a result, uh, you've heard, Bill has uh, orchestrated and led efforts to make our facilities second to none, and he continues to do so. Uh, so a collaborative school district. So I am uh, extremely grateful and humble to be here today and to uh, accept this uh, recognition. I want to th thank my son and uh, Brett and his wife, Lindsay, and for uh, Emma and uh, Charlie, wherever you are, uh, for being here today. I also want to thank my wife, Karen, who uh, probably wondered if she had a husband when he was working here, although uh, we would see each other passing th in the nights a little bit. Uh, she was uh, always a good person to talk to, reminded me a lot of Ann Remus in terms of her sensitivity of, of all kids and having them learn. So I could always talk to her about situations involving kids uh, and, and know that I was going to get some good advice. Um, Finally, I just want to extend my uh, sincere congratulations to all the other Hall of Fame uh, members. Um, they are uh, quite a group. Uh, I'm privileged to be a part of that group. And uh, with that, I say thank you.